Hi, my name is Hope Yoder and I own Designs by Hope Yoder. I'm so excited to be here doing this video. I love the Craft and Cut software and hopefully you've seen some of the previous videos on the web page on how to use the software. Today we're going to talk about application for vinyl and glass etching. If you're like me, you've spent a lot of hours looking on the website, looking on the internet, trying to find out how do you actually glass etch because it looks really cool and you own a die cutting machine, but you don't even know where to start. That's how I was several years ago. So this video is going to show you how to use vinyl that you've cut to create glass etching. Before I get started, let me show you two samples that I've created. The best part about these are these two samples are created from my original artwork that you received inside of the Craft and Cut software and you hopefully have installed it by now. There's over 250 designs that are my artwork that we've put into this program. So the samples that I'm going to show you, you can recreate those because you do have that artwork on that CD. First, instead of turning water into wine, we're going to turn a wine bottle into a water bottle. We've got this great design so that you can put water in a recycled wine bottle for your next dinner party, chill it, set it on the table. How awesome would that be to have this sample that you made yourself? So we've got some glass etching. The next sample, this is just a purchased little mirror that I bought at a craft store. It's in the section that has the candles. It's a mirror that's made to sit on a table and you put a candle on top of it so the reflection of the candle shines on the mirror. What we've done is we've taken one of our welded flower designs and etched the entire surface. Isn't this great? Again, you can recreate this at home. All I did was resize this. So let me stop in a moment and I'm going to show you how to create glass etching using one layer of vinyl. So I'll be back in just a moment to start the process to making these great glass etching projects. To start creating your glass etch project, let me go over the materials that you'll be using. First, you're going to be using a decal permanent vinyl. It comes with vinyl on the front and a paper backing on the back. Next, you're going to need some transfer tape. This comes in many different varieties and widths of roll. Sometimes you can buy it clear and sometimes it's a little milky or cloudy. I really like working with the clear so that I can see through that. We're going to be using some embroidery perfection tape, a little pick tool, a scraper, and then last but not least, you need glass to apply an etch. So we've taken a wine bottle and we've soaked it in water to remove the label and then you can buy a residue remover in your hardware store that comes in a spray can or a gel and we want to make sure that we get all of the sticky residue from that label off so this will be our clean surface that we're going to etch. We're going to cut the vinyl. You're going to place the vinyl on your die cutting mat so that you have the paper side down. And then you're going to take your scraper and you're going to scrape it down really well. Go ahead and cut the design. I've cut my design and to take the vinyl off the mat, let me show you a helpful hint from Hope. Rather than taking the vinyl off of the mat, I find it so much easier to turn the mat upside down and remove the mat off of the vinyl. Have you ever had an incident where you were cutting vinyl and the paper stuck all over the sticky mat? That's no fun and it takes a long time to remove. I've even gone as far as I bought a new mat because it was too hard to clean. So here's a little hint that hopefully you'll remember the next time you're cutting vinyl. Turn your mat upside down and instead of removing it right side up, take a corner Put your finger on the paper and slow and steadily remove your mat off of the paper. I don't know why that works better, just the laws of physics. It's a great way to not have the paper stuck to the mat. So now that you've taken it off the mat, 
Let's get started in weeding. The next step is to remove all of the background vinyl that you're not going to use and remove it. So we call this process weeding. Weeding like weeding in a garden. You've got beautiful flowers. You want those to stay in the ground and look great. And you want to remove the weeds, the part that you don't want anymore, and throw them away. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to weed away the background, take it off of this release paper, leaving all the pretty part that we're going to use on the paper. To do this, I like to use a little sharp pick tool. So I'm going to get started. And I'm going to take a corner and I always start in a corner and I'm going to slowly and steadily remove the sticky vinyl. This vinyl I don't need anymore so I'm going to just stick it on my table and continue. Now one of the tricks that I've learned is sometimes it's really difficult to see your design. So I might take the paper and roll it a little bit so I can see the cut lines. And then you want to have your project, now you probably aren't going to have a finished one already, you would be looking at your computer screen on the Craft & Cut software to see what the design looks like. That'll help you remove the correct part. So in this project, notice the frosted area is the area that etches. So when I'm removing the vinyl, the areas that are clear or unetched. That means that's the portion of the vinyl I want to leave on the paper. The area that's etched is the part that I want to remove off the paper. So I'm going to set this down so I can look at this. And I'm going to take and remove this first part. And this is all welded together, and we have videos on the Craft & Cut software on how to weld designs. That means it's all connected. And what I mean by weld, I'll just stick this down here for a minute. You can see how everything is one piece. I welded it together in the software because it made it easier for me to weed. So I don't need this portion anymore, although that would be great for another project, but we'll get rid of it now. And so here I have my great little design. Now you could keep making more and more rectangles or squares so that you had different areas to etch. I'm just going to go ahead and, so let me remove this last little section. And this is the portion that I'm going to use to place onto the glass. So our next step is I can remove all this weeded vinyl because I don't need it anymore. Notice how this is curling up. If that bothers you, you can take some embroidery perfection tape and tape this to the table so it doesn't curl up. It's just a little easier to handle. If you've not used the embroidery perfection tape, it's awesome and it's pink. Now I'm going to use the transfer tape. My next step is to take this vinyl that's on the paper. I need to get it off the paper and onto the bottle. So one of the things that is so confusing and that I get asked a lot of questions as I'm out teaching events is, you mean to tell me I have to pick that off the paper and stick it onto my surface? It's going to get out of alignment. Well, the very first vinyl project I did, that's how I did it. It was so difficult and it looked horrible when I got done with my project. I didn't know any better and I thought, this is no fun. Why is everybody raving about this? Transfer tape is going to do all of that for you. So you're going to peel off your tape and you're just going to cut off a little piece that's bigger than your paper. And what I'm going to do with the tape is it's sticky, so the object is to get this centered over my paper. So in order to do that, you're going to roll it down a little bit because you have one chance to get this tape over the paper. Because it's sticky, it could accidentally remove it off before you're ready. So I'm going to roll this so it's closer to the center, 
touch the center and smooth down both sides. Kind of like when you quilt, you'll start in the center and you'll work your way out. I'm going to then scrape the top of the tape. What I'm trying to do is get the vinyl to come off of that paper and stick to my tape. Beautiful. I'm going to use that in a minute. So let me remove my paper. I don't need this anymore, but I'll reuse this tape a little bit. Now I'm going to take my bottle and find the surface. Sometimes bottles will have a seam in the middle. You just want to find a nice clear area. And I'm going to take and let's, oops, let's put this so it won't roll. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it onto my bottle. Now I've got one shot to stick it to the bottle. So where it lands is where it's going to be. So I want to center it however I like it. I'm going to use this tape. I'm going to scrape the tape just like I scraped the paper. And for this, I want to take some time and scrape it down well. What you want to do is to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles in the area next to or adjacent to the open area. If you have a bubble in your vinyl that's not touching this inner area that we're going to etch, it's okay. Just be really mindful that any bubbles are removed that are right in this area or inside of the H2O. I have a bubble there that's on the edge. Because it's on the edge, I don't want the solution to leak underneath the vinyl. And you're going to look at it really well. You might want to take it to your window. Look under your window where you've got some good natural light. Looks pretty good. So from here, I'm going to remove this transfer tape. It did its job. By the way, you can reuse this transfer tape a couple more times. So I have my bottle. I want to take and tape off this open area around the bottle so that I don't accidentally get drops of etching cream there. So you can use your embroidery perfection tape and I'm going to tape off this whole section and then we'll come back and I'll etch the glass for you. I'm ready to have some fun. Are you ready? I've taped off all the surface that I do not want to accidentally drip some of my etching cream onto. The open area here is what is going to be etched. Now you want to have a surface. You noticed how earlier the bottle rolled around. So I want a, a surface that I can discard when I'm done. Bubble wrap works really great. The bubble side up because my bottle's not going to uh, go back and forth. I've got some etching cream. You're just going to follow the manufacturer's direction on the cream. Use it just like they tell you. But I'm going to show you just a little bit. I'm going to take a little reusable scraper and we're going to get a little bit of this cream onto our little scraper. And I'm going to just put a nice even coat in the upper area. Now you may have some etching cream in your stash and maybe it's not brown. Well, it oxidizes when air hits it. It might be white and creamy. It's all okay. One of the thing about the etching cream that I like to use is that it's reusable. Doesn't really matter how much you put on as long as it's a nice even coat. I found that more isn't necessarily better in this case. This cream is nice and thick, so it doesn't tend to run as much. The directions on this particular product tell me to leave this for 15 minutes. Now I found that I could leave it a little longer, so you can go to lunch, come back. When you're all done, then what you're going to do is put a new pair of gloves on, protect your work surface, scrape off this, and then scrape it back into the jar so you can reuse it for your next project. 
with gloves on, I'd take it to my sink and I'd wash it with soap and water. You're gonna have scraped all the excess gel off first. I even will take a wet paper towel and kind of wet it. That way the etching solution doesn't get in my sink. If you have an old laundry tub, that's the perfect place to do this. Once you've washed it really well with soap and water so there's no cream left, then you'll remove the tape, you'll remove the vinyl, throw all that away, wash it again with soap and water. When you're all done, then you have this beautiful glassed etch wine bottle that you can use to serve water. Don't forget we have the monogram circle designs that you can use from my original artwork that you can load into the Craft and Cut program. I hope you've enjoyed this project and you'll give glass etching a try. Until next time, happy crafting!